everyone and welcome to my channel Babbling Books. If you're new here, welcome. So I haven't put up any videos in a couple of months. Um, November, we all got the flu <laughs> and that was like a three week process. And then um, during December, the kids were home. So I really wasn't able to get much reading done. Um, it just wasn't a priority with so much stuff going on during the holidays. So this is going to be my um, favorite books of last year. I have picked 12 books. If I can manage to keep that part of the video really short, I may have some honorable mentions at the end. The um, I read 143 books last year. I was a little bit short of my goal, um, but you know, life happens. Um, some of the books I have physical copies of, and some of them um, I'm just going to have to post a picture up here. So to start with, uh, none of these are in any order. They're just my favorites of last year. Uh, so to start with, we have this uh, sci-fi classic, The Star is My Destination by Alfred Bester. So this was um, a pretty unique um, read. It's quite different than anything I have ever read before. Um, you have the main character, his name is Gully Foyle, and he is um, an absolute <laughs> bastard. Um, it's very difficult to like him. He's brutish and ignorant, and he's very much um, an antihero. And the book starts with the introduction um, to uh, jumping, is that what they call it? I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, is jumping, which is basically teleportation. So with the discovery of um, this teleportation, and it's very um, tongue-in-cheek. Um, I was very much reminded of Douglas Adams when um, they discussed, how do you fly? Well, you hurl yourself at the ground and you miss. Well, that's accurate, um, but doesn't really help. <laughs> and that is sort of their understanding of jumping. So then you get to Gully Foyle. He is um, marooned in space on this broken and busted spaceship. And he's barely surviving. And he sees a ship and he hails it and they do not assist him. So he decides from that moment forward that he is going to find out um, who was on that ship and he is going to get his revenge. And I think I was not really feeling this story right until chapter three. And then I stayed up for the rest of the night to finish it because it went in a direction I was not anticipating, which I always love. And... At the same time, I'm rooting for Gully Foil, but at the same time, I'm also kind of hoping somebody just shoots him. Um, he is just not a like, not a not a likable character. Also, trigger warning: so Gully Foil is a rapist. Um, that is not um, a detailed event in the book, but you are aware that it has happened. My other issue with this book is the author's portrayal of women. His All of his female characters are very willing to overlook all of Gully Foyle's very, very crappy personality traits and decisions because they love him. And I found that rather sickening. Um, but if you overlook that, it's a very, very, very interesting story. Um, and I enjoyed... Uh, kind of rooting for a character that I also despised at the same time. Um, and that is The Stars My Destination by Alfred Bester. And it's also a really great introduction um, to sci-fi classics. I thought it was very approachable. It almost read like, um, uh, like literary fiction, really. And then we have uh, The Redemption of Galen Pike by Carrie's Davies. So this is um, a short story collection. Actually, for such a small book, it had a pretty large number of stories in it. I mean, it's got quite a few. Um, this takes place, um, this is historical fiction. And 
I loved it. One of the stories in here um, is a woman who is um, living with her husband um, in the frontier um, of the United States. And her husband is gone and their neighbors are very far away. Um, but one neighbor, a widower, keeps showing up and he makes her very uncomfortable. And one day he shows up and her husband is gone and you have no idea what's going to happen. If he means her harm and what he's going to do to her, you just know that she's she's pretty frightened. And that story was absolutely fantastic. It sold me um, on this author and I would love to read any other short story collections that she has. If you like historical fiction, short stories, this one is a absolute great option. And that is The Redemption of Galen Pike by Carrie's Davies. Very, very good. And then another short story collection, uh, Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Deisha Filial. This one has been all over um, booktube as well. Um, but it is a short story collection <laughs> about the secret lives of church ladies. Um, I loved reading um, about women of color, their relationships with their family members. Um, I want to say um, two of the stories didn't quite resonate with me, but the other ones I absolutely loved. They're um, all different kinds of women. Some of them are um, There's different personalities, which I did appreciate because it wasn't like a copy and paste short story collection. All of the women were um, unique individuals in their own way. Um, but some of them are sad, some are poignant, they're all beautiful. And I do very much recommend this one. Um, it's also a great introductory, uh, introductory book into short story collections um, or if you just enjoy reading about um, female characters, or if you would like to read more about people of color, this one is a great option. <clears throat> and then we have A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. Um, this one kept popping up all over some different reading groups that I follow on Facebook where people responded with this book as their all-time favorite, so I decided it was time to read it. So, so glad I did. So this takes place um, in the very early 1900s in Brooklyn, New York. The family, um, the main character is a little girl, but the entire family is very impoverished. And there are very, very sad moments in this book where the family is, is trying desperately to get out of poverty. Um, it's a coming of age story. Um, told through the eyes of a little girl. And supposedly this is supposed to be um, very reminiscent of Betty Smith's life. Um, so slightly autobiographical, but probably only slightly. It's beautiful. It is incredibly well written. The characters, even the side characters, are very well fleshed out. The imagery um, is powerful. It's just a great great book. This is a very good introduction into classics um, because it's an easy read and it's very much a character-driven novel, a character study, and it follows the this family, particularly the little girl, um, into her, mm, her late teens, I would say, and um, it has the same sort of feel as when you uh, call the midwife. Um, that sort of, you know, how in Call the Midwife, they go to the East End, how those people are living. That's sort of what this, this, that's what this girl's life is like. Um, highly recommend that. And then we have The Yellow Wallpaper uh, by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. So this is another one that's been all over um, BookTube as well. It's a tiny, um, very short um, story. And this is, what edition is this? Is this a Puffins classic. This particular edition um, is uh, oh, Martino Fine Books. This particular edition is only 15 pages long. So this story takes place in the late 19th century. The main character, the narrator, um, is a wife and a, a new mother. And she's an unreliable, 
narrator. And this details her descent into madness. The author herself suffered from some sort of mental health crisis, which is what um, motivated her, inspired her to write this story. Um, from our perspective, it seems like the author and the main character are probably were suffering from postpartum depression. But of course, back then, um, mental health was almost unheard of. Um, and <clears throat> you can feel the desperation of both the author and this character for them to be treated with respect and dignity and to have a say in their health care, which, you know, of course, as a wife, your husband had a say. So this was a tough read, very gut-wrenching, but incredibly powerful. Um, and, you know, it's a great place to start if you would like to try a classic um, or a short story. Um, this should sell you on the idea that a short story can be just as powerful as a, as a full novel because they can if it's written well, and, and this one is. And then the last of the books that I actually have copies of is Passing by Nella Larson. So this is another one that's been all over BookTube. Um, I read it at the beginning of last year, and they have turned it into a movie, I think, or maybe a series on Netflix, but I think it's a movie. <sighs> so this, um, it's this, the main character, the narrator, um, is a woman of color, and the book takes place, uh, I want to say, in the very uh, early 1900s, maybe 1915, and she, she comes across an old acquaintance. Her, this acquaintance is also a woman of color, but come to find out she is passing um, as white, and her husband doesn't even know that his wife is, is a black woman. This book is very, it's just full of tension and stress and anxiety. Um, the entire time I was reading it, I felt like I was on the edge of a precipice and at any point I was just going to be shoved off. Um, but that sort of just made the book feel very, very powerful. It's more of a character study than it is a plot driven novel. Um, but I highly recommend it for anyone who would like to get started reading classics. I think it's very approachable. Um, I enjoyed learning about um, what life was like for people of color at this time period. Um, so I do very much recommend this one. And that is Passing by Nella Larson. <clears throat> Sorry, my, I had a, let me check my list. Oh, Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. So this is a middle grade book. And it's told in the form of poems. And this boy, I want to say he's about 13, his brother was just um, shot outside of their apartment complex in the city. I don't know if it's Chicago. Um, that's what it seemed like. And, but that could be because I was reading so much about the housing uh, projects in Chicago. That could be why I drew that conclusion. But anyway, his brother was shot. And so the next morning he gets his brother's gun. He gets in the elevator and he's going to go kill the man who killed his brother because that's the rules. So the majority of the story takes place in the elevator from his apartment to the ground floor. Um, I was amazed that the author could write such a powerful, well fleshed out novel in such a confined space in such a short time period, but he did. So this is amazing. My son read it, he did enjoy it. And I think more people should read this book. Um, and um, I have every intention of reading more by this author. I have some of his books um, on my shelf to read. Uh, Paranazi by Susanna Clark, another book <laughs> that's been all over booktube. Um, so this is another book that I thought was just so beautiful. It's magical and atmospheric and wondrous. So you have Paranazi and he is um, exploring this massive house, for lack of a better term. But it's, it's a house that never ends. It's full of halls and rooms and there's oceans in it and weather and wildlife and 
Paranazi is an unreliable narrator. So you have all of these questions like, what does the house mean? How did it get there? Where is the house? Who is Paranazi? How did he get there? But you have to sort of let those questions kind of, you have to let them go. You have to put them at the back of your mind and just enjoy the exploration of this house with Paranazi. It's about the journey. So you can't worry about where you're going or where you've been. It's just about, it's about where you are. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful and wondrous and I loved it. And then after that, we have The Secret of Nightingale Wood uh, by Lucy Strange. So this is another middle grade book. And the main character is a little girl and her mother is experiencing a mental health crisis. And it takes place, um, it felt, I think it was around the Victorian times. Um, I cannot remember, maybe it was more Edwardian, but I think it was Victorian. And the little girl is sort of having to live in this house where she's not able to have contact with her mother because her mother is, is like I said, suffering through a mental health crisis. She has a, a, a new sibling. Um, her father is under a lot of stress and is worried about his wife. Um, this almost felt like a child's version of like Jane Eyre. It had that sort of feel to it, if that makes sense, sort of almost slightly morose. Um, but it was beautifully written. I love child narrators. I love seeing things through the eyes of a child because it's, it's, there's fears and, and confidence and, and wonder. Um, so I really do recommend this one. I thought it was beautiful. And then after that, uh, Power, Faith, and Fantasy, America in the Middle East, 1776 to the present. So, um, my husband is an army vet. My brother is a, um, a Marine veteran. Um, they're both disabled vets. My, uh, my brother, um, had deployed to, um, the Middle East three times, twice in Iraq and one in Afghanistan. And so I feel, um, like a lot of the events between America and the Middle East have impacted, uh, my life somewhat. And that's probably where my interest began because I had a lot of questions about why America had such vast involvement in the Middle East, where that started and how we got from there to here. And this book is a really great place to start. I will say it seems to lean very much in favor of the United States um, so it's probably a little bit rose colored glasses, but I really enjoyed the beginning when you were first learning about, um, when America became its own nation and their involvement in the Middle East. I enjoyed that part the most. I think it was a good place to start. Um, I was able to learn a lot of things, but I do think that this book is probably not as well-rounded as it should be, but it was a very good starting place. So I do recommend that if you, if you have questions like that, like, you know, why are we so involved over there? This is a really great place to start. Um, it's a huge chunker of a book. It took me almost a month to read, but it was worth it because it led me to a lot of other books um, that had maybe more um, specific topics regarding America and the Middle East. Um, so like I said, it's a good place to start. And then What My Mother and I Don't Talk About, edited by Michelle Philgate. So this is an essay collection of people's relationships with their mothers. I loved it, um, both as a mother and a daughter. There was a lot of insight um, to the way people viewed their um, mother when they were children or teenagers and what they now see as adults. I thought that was fascinating. Um, some of these people have good relationships with their mother. Some people, a uh, few of the authors didn't have, don't have any relationship with their mother at all anymore. But this was great if you like reading about the lives of women. Um, if you are interested in the relationship between mothers and daughters, this one is a 
excellent es excellent es excellent essay collection. <laughs> And then the last book is Mrs. March by Virginia Fito. This one is going to stay with me for years. Um, Mrs. March is married to an author. Mrs. March is a very type A personality. She's uptight. She wants things done a certain way. She's very concerned with the way other people perceive her. That is, those are common themes of the entire book. One day, Mrs. March goes to the bakery and the woman at the counter says, oh, I just read your husband's book. Is this the first time he's based a character off of you? And Mrs. March is horrified. She hasn't read the book, but she's aware that one of the characters, the one that this, the, the bakery woman is talking about, is this old, sad prostitute that people feel feel that this character is a pathetic person. So she's horrified that anyone would draw that conclusion. Why would her husband do that to her? And her life just starts to spiral. She's an unreliable narrator and it's a very much a character study and you can literally feel the tension and stress and anxiety and madness that this character is experiencing. I really, really enjoyed this book. There are many things from it that are going to stay with me for my entire life. Um, in particular, Mrs. March, um, like I said, she's obsessed with the way people perceive her. So she has a Christmas party and everything is just so. She's put so much effort into every tiny little detail. So she tells the maid to make sure that you periodically check the bathroom and give it a light washing of water and bleach to make sure it's clean for the guests. So Mrs. March has all these beautiful decorations and the food and music and everything is just perfect. But it, as you're reading, you find out that for the rest of their lives, the guests at this party, what they were called was the smell of the bleachy bathroom. Nothing else about the party stuck with them except for this smell of cleaners. And that would be so horrifying to Mrs. March. So not only are you seeing through the eyes of Mrs. March, you're also getting little snapshots of, of reality. And so there's this constant friction of what Mrs. March sees and what is actually happening as well as the confusion of maybe what Mrs. March is seeing is actually what's happening. Um, there's a subplot um, of a murder in the book, but it's almost, it's, it's so insignificant that it almost really didn't need to be there. Um, I enjoyed reading about Mrs. March. Um, so yes, very much recommend that. So my honorable mention is this book series. It's called The Immortals After Dark. Um, once a year, sometimes twice a year. I listen to this entire series on audio. It is a uh, urban fantasy romance. You have witches and Valkyrie um, demons, not in the sense of from, not Christian demons, but like from a, you know, they have horns and wings. And you have uh, werewolves and vampires Succubus, pretty much everything you possibly can think of. Each book is about um, two characters finding each other and the process of them falling in love, basically. I love the characters. There are moments of humor. All of the women in their own right, for the most part, I think there's one exception. They're all very badass and powerful all the males are as well and they are just full of action very well-rounded characters the world building is fantastic it takes place in modern times um and you the home base is in new orleans but they will go all over the world sometimes to other worlds and the magic is fascinating and I just really recommend these to anybody who enjoys romance, if you enjoy urban fantasy, um, or if you just want to read something that is just a lot of fun. Um, 
So yeah. Anyway, so that is all of my favorite books from last year. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know what you thought of them. I'm always open to recommendations. And that's it. Bye.